Yes, it's on record. Let's go, Cardine. About Cardine. The first thing that, is, as I thought about him over the years, that struck me about Cardine, he was connected with the coal mining industry. So was Keegan, his father was a coal miner. So was Brian O'Halloran, his father was a coal miner. And I, I, when I went down the coal mines in Ipswich, one of the things that struck me was the extraordinary dependence that is built up in these old days, when you're totally in the dark underground, on other men in the group. Then no wonder that things like the Wire trade union movement and the YCW owed so much to the to the coal mining industry. That's by the by. Okay. Anyway, it's interesting because certainly it's true. Like in France and in Belgium, there's always a strong. The heartland was the coal industry in the north of France and sure. southern part of Belgium. Yeah, it's and true. The, and, the, and the, to me, you just. When, you, when I was down the mines in Ipswich, when you'd hear a creak of the timbers, you know that you knew everybody, there were, could he read every creak yeah, yeah. Uh, the, mm. that came across, that um, the, their lives were constantly in each other's sure. hands. And then, uh, so at any rate, the first thing that I remember about Cardine was being told that when he came home from his holidays, even from his first year in the seminary, he was very sad when he found he was no longer talking the same language as the blacks that he'd grown up with. You probably have come across that. Yep. Um, and that was one of the seeds of what pushed him towards working out the YCW methodology eventually. But it's the same experience that many priests who went through the concentration camps had. They found when they were in the camps, for all their theology and their spirituality, they weren't talking the language of the other people there. And that's what, when a lot of these men then came back into full society after the war, why the priest worker movement began. That they felt they had to have the same life experience if they were going to be able to talk in the same language as the workers. Um, was the priest worker movement then a logical outcome of Cardine's vision? Well, I feel even to call it the priest worker is get you on the wrong level. You start off with the priest being somehow apart and special, who becomes a worker, whereas it should be a worker priest, a worker in whom other blokes or women in the workforce have found that this person they can talk to and has a, in a, fair, a sense of the spiritual values. And so the leadership comes from there, and it's got to start from life, not um, not from seminaries. You can't train people into the, the, this sort of a vision of uh, uh, Carvin's vision from the seminaries. Uh, do you mind if I just go a little bit further sure. on that? Yeah, yeah. Um, contrast when when Jesus sent. Said he's, they, he took his. He didn't take his apostles out of the world. Didn't put, send them off to a, a yeshiva or a, a, an academy to learn theology. He sent them out just to talk about their lives, as he was talking about. Them. And uh, they had to go, trusting that God would provide with them with food and shelter. They had to go out with just wearing sandals and and uh, nothing else. Uh, I was with. Keegan and Cardine and uh, Jack Meard and Maria Meesman and others, the day Cardine was made a cardinal. A day or so before he'd been ordained a bishop and that had gone all right. But the day he was be being going to get his red hat, I was over in the little uh, apartment that they had taken in the Trastevere, the poorest part, part of Rome in those days. And Cardine came down the stairs wearing the, the full regalia of the Cardinal with the scarlet robes and everything. And he, he started to weep badly halfway down the steps. And Pat rushed up to him and said, what's wrong Joseph? And Caroline said, what I'm wearing today could feed and clothe a man and his wife and four or five kids for a whole year. 
Mm. I think I've got to ring Montini and tell him I'm not going ahead with it. Montini was the Pope, was Paul the Six. And uh, Pat and the others argued him out of it, saying that look at it, don't deserve, look at it as a privilege to you, it's for the whole YCW movement and the whole lay orders in the world, lay witness uh, reality of the church. Uh, and so he went on ahead of it, on, on with it. Uh, I've often wondered, would it have been better if Cardine had not re received the red hat? Admittedly, it did allow him in the council, once he was a cardinal, then he, with his personality, he was prepared to walk up and down the back aisles of the, uh, the council yelling out the name of a bishop's diocese when he wanted to talk to him. He didn't necessarily know his name. And uh, he, one of the wonderful things about Cardine, he had no self undue sense of self that he had to play a role. It was just himself. Um, the, uh, when, uh, and in light of Cardine's comment that day, I've also remembered what Dorothy Day replied when she was up. Suggest somebody said to her one day, "Oh, they'll canonise you one day, Dorothy," and she just said, "God forbid." Mm and take me away from the people I love most and who love me most. Give some people a gong in front of their name and they immediately belong to a different world. I'll stop it there. Stop there. <laughs>